hey guys and welcome back to my channel i am back with another true crime video and today we are going to be doing the story of francisca blockliger and howard oliver if you're new to my channel i try and do these videos often so please do check out the playlist i've done a couple already and i will be doing more in the near future now with that said and without wasting any more time let's dive into today's video today's video takes us to cape town in the western cape south africa francisca blockliger was born in the year 2000 to father Andreas Florine Blockliger and mother Shireen Blockliger. Her father is originally from Switzerland but also has some German roots. He arrived in South Africa in the year 1996 when he was only 27 years old and fell in love with the country and decided to relocate. A few years later he met a young lady named Shireen who was originally from Cape Town, South Africa and they fell in love and very soon after they got married. That is when they had their first child Francesca in the year 2000 and the a few years later they had their second child who was also a daughter and they named her Sophia. The family became a beautiful family of four and they loved each other dearly. They spent a lot of time together as a family in and around Cape Town enjoying different types of things like hiking, cycling, the kids also did a lot of horseback riding. They were just a typical family who really enjoyed spending time together whether they were outdoors doing adventurous things or indoors playing Scrabble or a little bit of chess. The family stayed in a very affluent neighborhood near the Tokai forest in Constantia and they lived a very comfortable life. The father had multiple businesses and the main one being a chain of luxury guest houses in and around Cape Town, one of them being the prestigious Chartsfield Guest House in Clark Bay. The kids also attended prestigious schools. Francesca was at the Waldorf School of Constantia while her little sister was at the German International School of Cape Town. This was mainly because the father was very conscious of the fact that even though they were born and raised in South Africa, they were roots were still Swiss and German. His family was still based in Switzerland and they traveled back and forth in Europe to visit them so he ensured that they knew the language and understood the culture. In 2016, Francesca was 16 years old and was doing grade 10 at the Waldorf School of Constantia where she was described by her peers and her teachers as someone who was very shy and humble. She really wanted to know more about her Swiss origins and therefore an exchange program was organized where she would be moving to Switzerland for a couple of months and the Swiss students would move to Cape Town and attend her school and live with her family while she does the same in Switzerland. The exchange was due to happen at the end of March of 2016 and her father was going to go up with her. So at the beginning of March of 2016, she was already starting to do preparations. So one of the main things that she did to prepare was to actually work out. Now she was already quite active and athletic, but as you can imagine, as a 16 year old, she's not only just moving to a new school, but a new country altogether as an exchange student all eyes are going to be on you. So she wanted to make sure that she was looking good and she was at the best weight or body of her life. And she really worked pretty hard to achieve this. She was always going jogging either by herself or with her father around their neighborhood, which was pretty safe. On Monday, the 7th of March, 2016, Francesca went to school as per usual and her mother dropped her off. And thereafter, she went to drop off her sister at the German school as per their routine. Francesca finished school at half past two and her little sister became because of extra mural activities, she finished an hour later at half past three. So what would normally happen in the afternoon is the mother would pick up Francesca and thereafter they would hang around together for an hour while they waited for their little sister. And at half past three, they would fetch the little sister who would be brought back by the bus that would drop her off at the Tokai bus stop. On the 7th of March, this is exactly what was due to happen. On this particular day though, they decided to take a walk through Tokai Forest with the family dog while they waited for Sophia to arrive. Takai Forest is a man-made forest that stretches through the Cape Town southern suburbs. It's extremely large. I will make sure to include a video just showing you how far it stretches if you're driving next to it. This is a bird's eye view of the forest. As you can see, it is very, very big. The forest is surrounded by very affluent suburbs and is used by families and individuals either to take walks or to actually horseback ride as well as hiking and just exercising in general. It's also extremely extremely aesthetically pleasing so you see a lot of people taking photo shoots inside the forest. Sakai is also surrounded by many farms and therefore it's very common to see farm workers walking through the forest either on their way to work or from their way back from work. 
So, as they normally would, Francesca and her mother, they parked the car in the parking area of Takai Forest. Together with the family dog, they started their walk. So, a few minutes into their walk, Francesca told her mom that she doesn't want to walk. In fact, she wanted to jog because she feels like she would get more exercise out of it. Her mother was like, okay, that's fine. But she had to make sure that she's at the parking area by 20 past 3 so that they could make it to her little sister by half past 3. Francesca had her iPhone with her that she was using to listen to music so she would be able to tell the time she then started jogging towards the forest and left the mother behind walking the dog like i already mentioned sakai forest is quite huge so there are multiple entry points from all sides of the forest and on the lower end of Takai, a young man was walking into the forest his name is Howard Oliver. Howard was 28 years old at the time he was born in 1988. He worked at Klein Constantia Farm, which is just next to Tokai Forest, where he was earning 120 rands daily. He was married and had actually been married for five years at this point. He had two children, both of which were daughters and they were less than five years. Howard Oliver was not what one would term as an upstanding citizen. He had seven previous convictions under his belt, ranging from theft and robbery all the way to substance positions but during this point he was trying to turn his life around so he was working at a farm and was earning an honest living so from his previous convictions he was given a range of sentences one of which he was given a fine that he paid 100 rand and the other one he was given five years suspended sentence where he would not be in jail provided that he doesn't commit any other crimes so at this point in his life like i already mentioned he was trying to earn an honest living via working at the farms now on this particular day he had come off from work quite early because he wasn't feeling well which is why he found himself at the tokai forest at around 3 p.m halfway through his walk into the forest he decided to sit down and smoke his substances as he used to now this is when he spotted francesca who had just stopped for a moment maybe she was trying to catch her breath maybe she was trying to look at the time on her cell phone possibly to check if she still had enough time to to run further or she was trying to change music whatever the case may be she was standing at that moment and she was looking at her phone in a confession much later on oliver would state that this is the moment that he decided that he wanted her phone and he was going to take it he hid behind the trees and planned that once she moved closer to him he would pounce on her from behind and sadly, a few moments later, this is exactly what happened. He pounced on her from the back and because she attempted to run off at this moment like anyone else would, he then decided to start stifling her in an effort to make sure that she gets unconscious. Immediately after she stopped moving, he took off her shoelaces and then he tied them around her hands as well as her neck. This is when he went on to have his way with her, forcing himself inside of her. As if this was not enough he then went on to take all her belongings including her iphone her headsets as well as a diamond ring she was wearing and a watch and he then left her in the middle of the forest and continued his journey back home on the other side of the forest the time now was around 20 past three and the mother was at the parking lot waiting for francesco to come back because she wasn't coming back and time was actually of the essence and the mother didn't want the little sister to wait by herself by the bus stop she decided to call her husband to tell him that Francesca was still not back yet and she was panicking. So we phoned and uh, she said uh, she's not back and she was very upset uh, she's gonna, because she doesn't like waiting and obviously doesn't want to have the small child standing at the bus stop by herself. I told her just go to the bus stop quickly, come back and then pick up Francesca, she'll be back. So she left and went to fetch Sophia and when they got back, Francesca was still not back at the fucking lot and this is when they then decided to walk through the forest to try and look for her. They searched and searched and searched and because they were not finding her anyway, she was panicking once more so she picked up the phone and called her husband. She then told him that he can't find Francesca anyway and that he must come and help look for her. Francesca's father got onto his motorbike and he drove to Tokai Forest immediately and he too started helping with the search. Drove around with a scooter, couldn't find her, screaming there. Met my wife, took my younger daughter on top of the motorbike in the back to stand on it and said we have a better sight from the top. Drove around, didn't find her. My wife in the meanwhile alerted the police. I met up with the police. Uh, they started looking, asking questions. 
we tried to find her, money, find her iPhone, but we couldn't get the password because she had her own, own password, her own I find and all sort of things so were not possible. My wife went home to find if we could track it or something like that. Didn't. Uh, in the meanwhile, the police alerted Neighborhood Watch. Uh, if in Kirstenhof, which was absolutely amazing team, in minutes, 50, 60, I don't know, maybe 100 people came out of all the forest with yellow vests. And it was not maybe half an hour later they found my daughter. This video shows the exact location where her body was found and you can just see how deep into the forest he left her. Unfortunately, when they found her, she was no more. The police then relayed this to the parents who were obviously so heartbroken. The police took over the scene in efforts to try and get any evidence that they could. Howard had left little to no evidence. Luckily though, he wasn't the brightest crying in the box because when he got home, he switched on the phone and the police were able to get the pings from the phone and they got an idea in terms of where he was because he was in West Lake, which is an informal settlement not too far from Constantia. It's also not clear whether he did it on purpose or not, but he also called the father's number around 9 p.m. the very same night that he took Francesca's life. And on the background, kids were talking and that is all the father could hear and he didn't say anything and he also dropped the phone. So it's very unclear if he did it on purpose or it was by error. Because the family wanted to speed up the investigation and also to get more clues in terms of where exactly this guy is and who he is, they then decided that they would go on national television to actually plead for anyone who has any sort of evidence or knows anything about this case to come forward and the reward would be given to them in the sum of 50,000 rands and it was later raised to 100,000 rands. Our messages that we were offering a big reward for the arrest and the conviction of the person who will find or hear anything that we can arrest that person that did that to our daughter. Is, is, the, is the reward coming from you personally? The reward will be coming from us personally. And we're talking of the region of 50,000 Rand. We are we appealing the community in South Africa, everywhere around here, to help us to find this person who can do something horrible like that. Not only that we can put him into jail, but not that he can do it again to somebody else. Naturally, tips started coming through. At this point, Howard had sold the phone for 200 Rand. Through investigative work, as well as the many tips that came through in the hopes of getting the reward, they were able to get to Howard Oliver, who immediately denied, denied, and denied. He was arrested regardless. Now, even though originally he had pleaded not guilty, a year into his arrest, even before the trial began, he finally confessed. Now, in a multiple page confession, he seeked to minimize the whole ordeal by saying that he never meant to do anything. It was never supposed to end like this. She was never supposed to pass away. He was trying to just get a phone and the evil spirits came over him and it really wasn't supposed to happen like that. Fortunately, during the trial the presiding judge didn't really care much about the evil spirits and he was found guilty unfortunately Francesca's passing took a toll on the family now even though they went through counseling they moved the little sister changed schools but it was just not enough Francesca's father would later state in an interview that the passing was just too hard on their marriage and due to feelings of blame and guilt they separated he has then since moved on and is in another romantic relationship howard oliver on the other hand was sentenced and given two life sentences now this is a very satisfying sentence considering all the other sentences that we have seen on the page on my previous videos and with that said we have come to the end of today's video thank you guys so so much for watching i really do appreciate you guys and i'll see you guys on the next one please stay safe out there bye